welcome back. Sancocho de res. In essence, it's a stew, and for some it's a soup, and this one is going to be with beef. Other places in the Caribbean, Spanish-speaking islands, Panama, and South America, Latin America, they might do it a little bit different. The thing is, Sancocho came from Canary Island, and it came here when they discovered the Western Hemisphere. So it's been here for hundreds of years. And my great-grandfather, by my father's side, he actually, actually emigrated from Canary Island. So I have a soft spot for this Canary Island uh, food, the ordinary there. So the way I'm going to cook it, I'm going to enhance the flavor exponentially. So pay attention and using natural ingredients and switching the order of doing things. I cook the meat a little bit different and doing some things that when you eat this stuff, it's going to blow your mind away. I'm telling you. And I add in certain ingredients at different stages of the cooking process just to enhance that flavor. So go nowhere. Let's create. So you have the ingredients. And just so you know, I'm not going to use the entire amount. I'm just going to illustrate the ingredients. How much of those ingredients you're going to use, it depends on how much you're cooking in your sancocho, how big of the pot it is. So I'm going to have some olive oil. This is optional, but I'm going to use some small paprika. Sea salt for taste. Onions. Um, I might not use in one, but it's going to be chopped into very small pieces. Garlic, I might use some of it, and I'm going to mince it. Uh, sweet peppers, I'm going to use some amount of that. Mince very small too. Oregano, also it's going to be minced, uh, I mean cut, chopped. Cilantro. I'm going to use some of this, not the entire thing, but maybe a couple other, uh, you know, leaf. Sweet plantain, green plantain, they're going to be cut in, you know, like big cylinders. I have malanga, malanga root, we call it malanga in Puerto Rico. I mind not using one, because I'm not going to be cooking a lot. Potatoes, could be optional. Yuca, could be optional, but I'm going to use some. Celery. Um, I'm going to grate a very small tomer tomato. Uh, this is kind of optional too, but I'm going to use it. Some people use uh, tomato, canned tomato sauce. I don't like to use uh, tomato sauce, corn, this is a uh, key. I'm going, to, I'm going to peel and use some carrots. You can use pumpkin or squash. You just, I mean, you're not going to use the, the whole thing. I still have to peel and cut a lot of this stuff. And chayote, you're going to need that too. Um, I think I have everything. Oh, I have a sweet potato. This is actually very optional, but I'm going to use some. And I think that pretty much it. Once again, you're not going to use the entire amount. You're just going to use a portion. But I wanted to show you, you know, the ingredients I'm going to be using today. So here's the beef. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that, with this. This for me is pretty simple. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. That's it. You could have done it overnight too, in which case I would have added a little bit of vinegar. But salt and papa. Salt and pepper. I had this. Pan, 
and I have my heat up very high. Going to add some extra virgin olive oil. And you know what? I'm going to add a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my meat and I'm going to add them there. Now, a lot of people, what they do in Puerto Rico when they do their sancocho, they just put everything together with water and they start cooking. I like to cook with the senses. I like to take my meals to a different level. So what I do with this, I just come to darken them a little, a little. I'm not frying this, I just, you know, kind of getting them dark and nice. So the heat transfer and the juices mix together. This is the first step of the flavor. You're not going to do this for a long time. This is about two or three minutes max. So you move it around. Two to three minutes. High heat. So I did this for about three and a half minutes. Now I'm going to take it out of here. I had this pot relatively big. Hot heat. High heat. Put some olive oil. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some of my onions. This is one onion, small, very small one. See how small I chop it. A little bit of the sweet pepper. You can add the green one too, by the way. Then you start to steer things around a little bit. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some of the oregano, see how little, not a lot. Get it thin. Cilantro, I didn't even chop it, I just going to add a little bit. I like cooking with the senses, you know, I like to smell, I like the sound of the music. Listen to this music. I have about eight to 10 feet of garlic, some mint, some squish. I use this a uh, little to, to mince it, but you can do it any way you want. Mix the things around a little bit. Tomato sauce. Not a whole lot. Just a little bit. I grated my own tomato. Cooking with the senses. Now what I'm going to do I have big chunks of sayote, but I also cook a few little ones, tiny ones. So I'm going to add it there. And I'm going to add the squash now. See how little it is? I have to back up so the camera doesn't get foggy. Let me lower the heat to medium. Because I don't want this stuff burnt. So now I start moving from here 
in pieces of meat. I want the base to mix with the meat. Some of the juice too. Moving that away. This is how you do it, just start mixing it up. And you don't do this for a long time, you're just mixing the base and the meat, the juices. Listen to the sound of the music. Just listen to the sound of the music. And I'm going to do this for about 90 seconds, meaning a minute and a half. No more than two minutes. Don't put a little bit of the paprika. Just a little bit, not a lot. And you could have done that before too, by the way. It doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to do something unusual. But before I do that unusual thing, I'm going to add some beef broth. You can just water too. And the amount of broth is going to be dependent on the amount of solids. And we still have quite a bit of solids. So let me add for now this much. Let me turn off the heat to high again. Stir things a little bit. Now it comes to the unusual thing. This is saffron. Puerto Rico, we don't add that, but I add it to my meals, some of my stews. And this one in particular, I'm going to add it to. It's not a lot, just enough to give it a flavor. And you can, uh, you know, buy saffron anywhere. You can order, I order mine from small business. Because I'm picky about this kind of stuff. So once again, I have to hit a high. Um, let me start adding some of this stuff. Malanga, see how I cut it? I peel it and I cut it into little blocks. Let me move this pun out of the way. The optional sweet potatoes. See, three tiny ones. Got uh, it. I didn't even peel that one. Plantains, I didn't take the skin out. You can. I had the green one, I had the sweet one. You know, two large cylinders. Potatoes, just a couple pieces. You know, you, can, you don't have to go crazy. About, that is a half a potato. Um, yuca and stuff. Corn, see how I cut it into two pieces? Actually, mine is going to have three. Carrots, I peel them and I cut them. Let me back up a little bit. You saw that I added some chayote at the beginning when I was doing the base. Tiny ones, now I'm going to add a couple of bigger blocks. Oops, damn it. <laughs> Stuff jumping me. More carrots. Some celery. People have celery I added too sometimes. Start moving stuff around. 
so the meat doesn't get stuck at the bottom and you know you want everything mixed you want the flavor of the meat mixing with everything else Should I mix? By the way, I did watch <laughs> the plant time before I put them there. If you feel uncomfortable, you can take the pills out. The reason I didn't is because I don't. the plant time can get mushy, especially the uh, ripe ones, and I don't want that mushiness. You know, but it's up to you. I'm kind of old school. You gotta take this stuff out too, by the way, in the green one. Let's say hell now. Let me go old school. Anyhow, when you're eating it, that thing's going to peel easily. Now, here's something important that you need to do, and you have to do it now, that you mix everything. You have to give it a taste. And then it's soft. Because how, taste-wise, you know, like salt-wise, how it tastes now in salt is how it's going to taste later. And I'm going to add to my taste. Then you stir. Give it another taste. See, my situation is that my broth doesn't have salt. And as a result of that, I need to add my own to my taste. Now you're going to do this. See how nice it's looking. You let it boil for a little bit. Once it starts boiling, let it boil for like two or three minutes. So now that I see some of the boiling process taking place, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lower the heat from high to medium. And I'm going to cover this baby up. And I'm going to put the timer for like, let's make it 25 minutes. I might come back and take a look and then I take it from there. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to lower it to kind of medium low and I'm going to let it cook for another maybe 25 minutes. So I want the flavor. I want the meat to be nice. I want it very soft and good to go. So I'm going to put another 25 minutes, come back and check it out. There's another 25 minutes, which I count for 50. It was 25 the first time, 25 the second time. So now it's ready for almost the final touches. I'm going to cook it for another 25 minutes. This time I'm going to go from uh, medium low to low. Because I truly want those flavors mixed. Now this is what I'm going to do. This is what I call the last leg of my sancocho. Uh, I put a little bit of saffron earlier. This is uh, saffron from Spain, by the way, which I ordered here in the United States. Uh, this one, this type that I'm going to use now, I did this. And the reason I like saffron is that people Think that Sancocho is from Puerto Rico. Sancocho is in practically every place in Latin America because Sancocho was brought in to the Western Hemisphere by the Canary Islands, which is in Spain. So I try to understand the beginnings, you know, of food, how, how they came to a country and whatever, you know, to, to this side of the world, what is originated. 
to understand what people found fascinating. So I like to add the saffron stuff. And this one, I uh, smash it. I, don't have a, I have a very, very short video, less than a minute, that shows the three ways that you should use saffron. Now, this is cilantro. I call this the... This is my final touch when I cook. I like to put it like this to bring the earth natural flavor and, and, and smell. Because I am now toward the end of the cooking process, so I want to have the flavor here, that smell, the earth flavor. And that's what I add in a little bit toward the end so it doesn't disintegrate completely. And you know, whether you do it earlier or later, I don't mind adding a couple of bay leaf, you know, toward the last uh, 20 minutes of cooking. Now, if this was a 20 minute thing, I would have put it at the beginning, but I want the, I want to, for them to be there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, not for the entire 75 minutes, because I want to bring the last flavor out that's what I'm, and look, look at the, how beautiful it looks. You know, this is the last leg. So I have it for 25 minutes. Let me lower the heat to, not super low, but close to low. You know what I mean? Just a notch higher than low. Cover again. And I'll be back. 